Okay. Why are you? Am I crazy? Like, Shh, okay, stop. Hi, right, everybody. Welcome to Drunkards and Dragons Mistrum, uh, episode 18. Uh, we last time refresh my memory on everything that happened. You guys got attacked by some Hydra. You left the city, got the location of a tinkerer, got the mission to kill the tinkerer. Which you didn't give an answer to. Yeah, so we, we fought in the arena the episode before. After that, we had uh, everything that comes with the... Uh, after that, we had, were given the location of the Tinkerer by two different people. We headed out in the direction of the Tinkerer's location. We got attacked by some Hydra. And, oh, Hydra. And then uh, now we're camping, so we'll take it from there. Okay. I had remembered right. You guys had just sat down for camp? Yep. So who's on watch? Um, Enix will take the first watch. I'm pretty sure that's not the case. Pretty sure Amir fell asleep on the watch, and then Anubis never got woken up, and now yes. we're in oh. the morning. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, okay. You guys are in the morning. Never mind. That sounds yeah, right. You guys had all the vision. So you guys wake up. Um, Nobody's dead. But you know That's us. good. And the music's not playing right now. There we go. Yes, it's quiet and scary. Yeah, so, you guys just woke up. What do you guys do? I guess we're going to head out and keep going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And who's leading and who's keeping watch? One person oh, will leave, two people keep watch. I'll keep watch. And then who's the second person keeping watch? Uh, we'll do Enes because uh, the variant, I believe, has to lead us, right? He has to do the... I don't have to do anything. Apparently Nubis is leading us. Sorry. <laughs> Anybody can lead, really. Oh, we have. He just has favorite terrain. Yeah, that's why. Right. Well, you already rolled, so. But I got a twenty, so it doesn't yeah. matter. <laughs> Twelve perception. Hey. <clears throat> so, you guys are walking through, uh, avoiding. You see a uh, a large crevice to your left, and uh, some hills and some boulders behind the hills to your right. Um, but you're able to go in between both without really dealing with either because of your role. And you finally get to the edge of the forest and into the mountains. Now, uh, what, what are you guys going to do now? It just went from being like uh, kind of grass plains with some trees to a lot of heavy trees. So... Are we in the mountains or... Technically, yeah, you're in the mountains. Okay. So I imagine, would imagine, <laughs> since you guys switched terrains, I'm going to have you make another perception and another uh, survival roll. 18, nice. Okay. Anubis with an actual 20. You notice Anubis as you're walking through. You get about here. Um... You notice two things. One, you hear the sound of hooves hitting rocks. Mm. A few, probably like a few hundred feet away. And do you can also swear as you turn your head, you see something, a, a, fig, a figure, or maybe multiple figures, you can't really tell. Um, you feel like you're being watched. Centaurs, okay. Guys, I think we're being watched. Uh, which direction on the mini map? Um, he's you. As you're turning, you feel like you see it. Like, it's never ever in one spot. They're moving constantly. The eyes watch us. The heels of eyes. <laughs> what do you guys do? Uh, 
where it is. Can I turn it down? What do you guys do? I like has pass without a trace to stealth check. Hi. That's a good idea. So you guys are going to continue forward stealthily? In the direction of the hooves or not in the direction of the hooves? In the direction we've been going the whole time. Yep. Okay. That's going to be kind of in the direction of the hooves. That's <laughs> fine. Good thing we have pass without a trace. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, stealth. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. I'm just okay. treading along. What's wrong with you people? Hey, Beast, on your mic, can you turn on the... Oh, maybe that's not... What? Never mind. Maybe it's not you. I don't yeah. know who's bumping around. But... Going forward? Oh, I only have one of you selected. Going forward? Oh, I need um, I need um, bike to roll a stealth check. It's not your mic. Rachel, you can leave it where it was. Okay. No, yeah, you're fine. Anubis, I need Spike to roll a stealth check. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Man, we did better than you guys did, okay. I'm, <laughs> I'm riding on Spike, so I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'll count it as yours, because you're riding, and that makes sense. I'll allow it. Um, as you're walking, you notice <laughs> you get to like the top of the mountain, and you see it was making the noise. Um, down in a valley, probably uh, off to your right, you see four horses, white fur with um, feathered wings coming out of their back. They seem to be eating something on the floor. Pegasi. And then to your left, you see a, a river that runs um, towards a wooden wall into what appears to be some sort of encampment. So we got Hercules down there. We should be careful. All right. uh, you what? all see this as he points it out. Also. Which um, way you guys want to go? Go to the encampment. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Let's. I will walk up to the horses very calmly. Do they? Do they freak out a little bit or no? Um, or the Pegasus or whatever they're called. Roll. Animal. Are you being stealthy when you walk up to them. Uh, like not stealthy, but calmly. I don't know if that's roll an animal handling check. Meet your mic, Rachel. So they uh, okay. You walk up to them. Um, just do it on your little thing. To notice you, and as you get closer, they all start to back up, like they're kind of matching your step, but like calmly, but not freaking out. I mean, they're um, they're getting a little agitated, but okay. I'm gonna. Um, I also assume you're not on spike. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. I'll I'll put my hands up and kind of bow and back away. See what do they do? Um, now that they've noticed you, they don't go back to eating. They kind of just watch. Okay. Can I pick up? They're just eating the grass, or? Yeah, they were eating some like foliage on the floor. I'm just going to grab some of it and kind of hold my hand out calmly, see if any come toward me. They don't. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, um, yeah. What are you guys doing? <laughs> We're watching you do down. this. Staying <laughs> stealth the whole time. All right. Um, Ilgen, make a wisdom saving throw real quick. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> Boom! Ooh. Nat 20. Ooh. Oh, really? Yep. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Come on. Make this not fun <laughs> for me. Hold on, I have to find something real quick. Oh, I know what the noise is. Hold on. I gotta move freaking giant ass wicket down off the table. Um, yeah. You feel. <sighs> Hold on, I have to look up this real quick. You can unmute your mic now, Rachel. It's not you. Yeah. It's wicked. Bobbing on the table. It's kind of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got like a fan or something. I do have AC a fan. There is a setting on the on the mic settings where you can do automatic filters she's, she, and stuff. She's not even there. She she can't hear you. Yeah, but 
<laughs> there you go. Was that better? Um, nope. Okay. You actually you don't feel as anything happens. You feel just, like a uh, weird tingling, and then it goes away. When you're not talking, you just have it muted. You guys heading towards the encampment? Uh, I'm going to stay with the horses or the pegasi, pegasi. Yeah, they're pegasus. That's there. All right. So, Anubis, uh, where are you staying with Spike? Yeah, Spike will be kind of trotting down s- slowly, but safely. Okay. So, you guys head towards the encampment. Uh, as you're walking the towards, the, towards the encampment, this is not the spot, no. The spot yeah. is still like a week out. Um, this is like the very edge of the mountains. Um, uh, I would like. Uh, Everybody who's going to the camp to make a perception check, and I assume you're still being stealthy. Yes. So, everybody that's going to the camp can make a perception check. And uh, what are you doing, Anubis? I think Ildren's going to hang um, back with whoever's hanging back, and then Enix will head up, though. How far away is the mountains from the encampment? Probably like a couple hundred feet. This is like a rather wide valley that they kind of have set in the center with a river that seems to run through the camp. A river runs through it? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just going <laughs> to... We're not starting this shit again. Uh, um, I'm just, I don't know. I'm going to keep trying to let them eat the thing or make them come towards me. Uh, Varian and Amir, you notice that this camp at the, the gate that you see, that's actually right there, that's actually where the gate is, you see um, two red-skinned figures, what you recognize as hobgoblins, because you met um, one of them before. They seem to just be standing guard, uh, yeah. and um, looking closely, you realize this is a, a hobgoblin camp. Do I remember um, the hobgoblin's name that I ran into inside the Underdark? Uh, well, you brought her to this island, so yes. You remember her as, as I look for it real quick, Rella. 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 Yeah. Rella. Rella. Jordan, your 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 memory is pretty impressive. Better than mine. Don't tell that to Rachel. What do <laughs> what do hobgoblins do? Um, from your experience, roll a roll a nature check. Okay. It never works for no, anything. No, actually, roll a history check. Roll a history check. Memories never work yep. for anything. Well, we roll a history check. Remember. You know hobgoblins to be um, the nicest of the goblins and the smartest of the goblins. Um, they usually don't attack people outright, unless it's like a time of war that they're fighting in. Which, looking at this camp, it does not appear to be. <laughs> what, like, motivates them? Do they have, like, a common war. thing? War. Okay. Like, they're really good fighters. With my 25, do I see if they have any, like, tinker weapons? You see uh, some of the guards have a few, um, well, none of the, the basic guards standing wash, but you do see um, some of the people walking through the city that appear to have, like, um, more people following them have um, nicer weapons that might be tinkerish, but it's kind of hard to see. But they're definitely... Yeah. Anubis, what are you doing with the horses? Uh, continuing to try to make them like me. <laughs> yeah. Roll an animal handling check. If it's a net one, I swear. Then you'll be done with it. Uh, they um, about after a few minutes, they all st- they all fly away pretty fast. <laughs> Without even like, they don't even have to run. They kind of their wings just start flapping, and four of them or all four of them fly away. All right. Um. Damn, I really wanted some of those feathers. Um, I'm going <laughs> to hop on Spike and kind of slowly trod toward the rest, but staying back pretty distantly. Um, so, yeah, you guys see the camp. What do you do? Uh, I'm just going to kind of lurk and see what happens as they are going to. Wait a minute. Lurking on the top. I speak goblin. <gasps> oh, boom. Oh, this came into handy here. Okay. Does it look like there's a back entrance or anything? I'm just gonna uh, walk up to the front gate. Those. I'm gonna. Just, I'm not gonna go stealthy anymore. I'm just gonna walk up to the front gate. See what happens. Well, let me does the that. river? Go, does the river go all the way through the camp? 
Yes. Looks like it does. It's on the map now. Oh yeah. Okay. I can see it. Um. Um. So we'll say you guys are back here. Can 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 someone access the river and go under? You do not know. Well, I'm gonna go over there to the back. <laughs> you could just walk in the front with us. Um, I no. don't have people on the map, but there's guards there. At the back. We'll pretend these are the guards. Yeah, those are the guards. It's like a city map. I didn't put a bunch of people there. It would be redundant. Uh, all right, so you walk up, and uh, the guards kind of, uh, I assume you're not being stealthy? No, nope. I am not being stealthy. They kind of uh, perk up a little bit and um, stand to attention as you walk. The gate is currently closed. Mm -hmm. It's not open, like in the picture? Okay. No, if they didn't have a closed gate, I had to use the open one. All right. Yeah. I'm going to speak to them in <laughs> Goblin and say... Hello, friends. Uh, we're traveling through to try to find some treasure. I was wondering what's going on here. We ran into your guys' camp. Roll a persuasion check. With advantage, because you're using Goblin. Daddy won, dude. Almost. Um, one of them, uh, the one on the left, speaks up to you and goes, <clears throat> uh, You found uh, the, the encampment of Harkin. That's the Hobble Goblin camp here. Are you look? Is your group looking for anything specific? Honestly, no. But we're always interested in going to the cities and see if you guys do you trade and have wares for us to buy potentially. We have basic trade, but letting you in the city means I'm gonna have to go get somebody. He he runs into the he like knocks on the gate, shouts a few words that basically says like open up. Uh, he's gonna go in. Okay. The other guard is just sitting there. I'm gonna chat with him. Um, say, how's your day going? Kind of just, it's, it's going good. We don't get nice, a lot nice. of humans or around our camp. No, Usually. we're we're kind of doing special things around here. Are you guys familiar with the uh, the arena? I think I've heard of it, but I've I've never been to Saludia, so. Oh, why not? It's not that far away. Um, their cities are a bit different than the Hobgoblin cities here. Phoenix, or the Hobgoblin city here. Phoenix is gonna move up. I've seen you guys fight. You guys would do great in the arena. You, you should put a team in. Uh, I need Varian to make a wisdom saving throw. Actually, no, sorry, Enix, make a wisdom saving throw. No. You're not gonna get away from the saving throw. It's gonna get you. Ten. So you walk up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, just so I know, uh, for when she comes out, uh, how many people are in your group? I take my hands out and I start counting. I go <laughs> one, two. You three, could just bring them all four, to the gate. Five, Might five of us and a big pet. Uh, if you want to, you could bring them all to the gate. It might make it easier when uh, Shara comes out. You want me to? You want me to call him? Tell him to come out. Uh, you know, not that we don't trust you. We just met you, so more than happy to talk to. Yeah, Shara. but you walked up to the gate of our camp, and as um, as he says that, the gate opens, and you see a um, n very nicely dressed female hobgoblin in uh, these uh, purple, yeah, purplish robes. Mm -hmm. Um, she kind of just walks forward, and she goes, "Hello." I am Shah Lithera, and I deal with uh, the outsiders. Um, and who are you? My name is uh, Varian. The gentleman behind me, he can't talk. He's retarded. I am Dragonborn. Phoenix. See, exactly. Prove my point. Um, and I have uh, three other party members who are staying back. They were looking at some of your Pegasi. I don't know if that's the portal form. You don't own any Pegasi. Those must oh, be no. Wild. Oh, they were pretty cool. All Some right. of them do live in the mountains here, but taming them is rather difficult. Gotcha. We were just traveling, and we saw your encampment. We wanted to see what was going on. And where do you hail from? Saludia uh, City? Well, we just went in Saludia City. We actually won the arena. Team Harbingers. Uh, but we all come from the mainland. Uh, Aventhera. Aventhera. I myself come from, you know, the farmlands, so. Okay. And what is uh, your group's interest with our uh, camp, Harkin? We like to make friends. 
We just want to come in, travel, talk, drink. We love drinking. Yeah. Sure do. Well, Hawken isn't a city. It's more of a camp, but... Roll a persuasion check with advantage. I assume we're doing this conversation in Goblin. Oh, I hope so. I have no clue. <laughs> I have no clue what they're saying. I can let your group in the in the camp, and you're welcome to stay. But just know that we will keep close eyes on you. Yeah, you guys have anything going on? Um, any yeah. market events or any cool stuff um, we can we check out? We have a small market in the center. You are welcome to check out. Do you let people yeah. in normally? Everybody's going to give us the, the stank eye, maybe? But people will be nice to you. Okay. People we let in are people that we trust. If you're looking for curiosities, visit uh, Caviera. Oh, what's Caviera? She's um, the town shaman. Ooh. Oh, also, we're kind of in the business of uh, doing things for people for rewards. So if you need anything done, you hire us. We can handle our problems on our own. Oh, I know you can. I'm just saying if you know of anybody, you just shoot them some business. Let us know. Oof. We're called the Harbingers. Feel free to set up your camp in any uh, empty lots or space by uh, the rest of the tents. You won't be bothered. I'm going to go ahead and wave in the crew. Oh. I'm giving them the... Seal Team Six. <laughs> he gives you the Seal Team Six signal. Seal journal um, uh, As you guys, I assume you guys walk in. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe. You're nice to me. As you guys walk in, she kind of directs you. Uh, Caviera is down there, right by the farm. Uh, the market is near the center of the village, and um, right by the forges. Don't get into any trouble. We do not tolerate that. You will be kicked out or executed, whatever is necessary. Oh, that's not us. Good. You'll keep these eyes guys, on you. These guys uh, <laughs> look weird at Spike. I mean, you don't know if they're looking weird at Spike necessarily or they're just looking weird at your group because it is a hodgepodge mixture of a lot of weird shit. But, True. Yeah, they definitely... Not turning away any gazes. <laughs> I'm just gonna start flexing and just be like, "Hey, hi." <laughs> we came from that way. <laughs> that way. Yeah. Back there. <laughs> you have any gems for Dragonborns? I'm sorry. What did you ask? No, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> any Dragonborn in here? Um. We had one, but he left a while ago. Uh, left. Y'all yeah, didn't need him, did you? <laughs> no. I'm pretty sure Dragonborns would taste delicious, I'm sure. Is this like a bar over here, or is this the shaman? I didn't see you click. This looks like a shaman hut, to be this honest. This is the shaman hut. Oh, this is the shaman hut? Yeah. It looks like a hut. It looks like a ritualistic where they sacrifice variant. <laughs> 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 um... I mean, yeah, the size is kind of weird, but that that like stone thing right there is actually like a small tent. Okay, I ask if if the people in the village speak common. My friends don't know mm -hmm. Goblin. Most people here do speak common. Cool. But you might get better services if you use native tongue. Not, not that. Gotcha. Though. Can I can I shake? Is it is it a her? Yes. Char I, is I, a um. I'm afraid of the pronouns, so her. Okay. She does not put her hand out to shake yours. I leave it there. If you need us, uh, the general, the chief's hut is a. Uh, she points to the biggest hut back there. Okay. Uh, that is where I will be. If you need any more questions, and that is where our chief will be. So be on your best behavior if you decide to head in that direction. I kind of like I'm holding my hand out and I say, "Oh, I'm I'm human, so this must be weird." But so this is a hand. When someone hands it out. Like, typically, you'll shake it to say, like... She turns around and she walks away. Going? <laughs> um, you oh, do yeah? notice that um, two guards uh -huh. appear to just be, like, following you from the back. Not, like... They don't have the weapons out, but they seem to just be tailing you. They're not trying to hide. They're being pretty obvious about it. <laughs> they are a presence. They observe and report. 
Look over here, guys. We got babysitters. So if you look um, to the right, yeah, that's where the shaman hut is. Uh, this is the camp with the fire in it. Um, that's the marketplace, and then the forges are right there. And I am going to go to the marketplace. Do I have any temples or anything? I guess the shaman hut is probably the closest. Is everybody heading to the shaman hut? Yeah, we'll no, go with the them. marketplace. Okay. What do the guards do? Do they split up one and one when we split up? Um. Yeah, they actually do. One follows Anubis, and then one follows you. Can I turn around and start talking to the guy? Before we leave, and I see them split off, I say, you're going to need more than one for that guy. <laughs> kind of nods, and uh, <laughs> walks over. Uh, you, you see him go talk to another guard, and he appears to be summoning more. <laughs> okay, so as you walk into the uh, shaman hut, there's a like kind of like a, a tent flap that hangs down or with a cloth. It's like a cloth canvas type circle around it uh, it appears to have been pulled open um do you guys just walk up to the stairs into the tent do i notice that there's any like special customs like i need to take off my shoes or anything i'm um, looking around make a recession check i'll be right back i will make I'm a gonna, reception check i'm gonna turn around and just be like hey i got fans <laughs> um so you see the Funny few guys. um looking around you see like um skull totems a uh, few bones of like animals they all appear to be animal bones not human bones it's not my kind of place um, you do actually see a skeleton uh, head that kind of does look a bit humanoid but you recognize it as a uh, um, a goblinoid not a hobgoblin but like a a goblin of sorts yeah the green right. ones gotcha um can i can I, are these guys like close or how far away are they uh, they're staying by? about 10 they're staying about 20 to 30 feet back and how many now are there? Thanks for There's me. two following you, and one has split off, and then there's one following Enix, and uh, there's one following the group, and as you guys go to the Shaman Hut, there appears to be another one that comes up. So okay. There's two following um, you, one on Enix, two on you. Can I walk towards them? Do they back away? Or... No. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna be like, uh, so you guys speak common, right? Um, the one on the right, kind of a bit taller, uh, better built, and he's carrying, he doesn't have a shield like the other ones do. He has a, a sword on his back. He goes, uh, I do, yes. Oh, great. Um, well, I, I'm heading to your marketplace and uh, might be wanting to buy some stuff. Do you mind translating for me? It'll make it a little easier. Roll a persuasion check. Oh. Yeah. Awesome, thanks. Too much of a problem. And he, what are you looking for exactly? Not just anything. I, I'm just kind of browsing your area. You know, I'm new here, so I'd like to just kind of peruse. Okay. He walks you over to the uh, general market stalls. Uh, in here, you see food. Um, you see some places with like trinkets, um, clothing, all your basics. Okay. Uh, you, gonna... To the right, you see where the blacksmiths are. Um, you see the forges. There's three big ones, and they have like multiple working stations, each on each forge. Um, and then tents that have like smoke rising out of them, and so you assume that's like blacksmith stuff. Okay. And then um, just general market stuff. What what kind of sword does he have on his back? Is it like a great sword, or is it like a, it's a great sword? Yeah. It's a great sword. Um, does it look pretty pretty nice, or? It looks well made, but nothing like enchanted or anything like that. Okay. It just looks like basic. Um, I'm gonna ask him if he's seen anything like my sword. You have the. Adam Adamant. Adam yeah. Now, uh, it's a nice looking sword, but I've never seen any metal of it. Or anything like you, want that. See, you want to see something cool? And I snap my fingers and it just lights on fire. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah, we don't really have much magic users here. Oh, this or isn't magic. That, this is just None sweet. that can enchant something like that. We just have <laughs> destruction-based wizardry. Okay, well, I'll turn off the fire, and then um, I'll just be like, hey, that's no problem. I'm just here to kind of hang out. Uh, what, what's your favorite shop around here? Um, well, uh, the market store down there has the best locally grown fruit, if you're looking for something like that. Mm. Uh, that's where I go for my food. All right. Well, Here's this guy first. Yeah. Here's this He's guy just gives people money. He's a beefy boy. He gotta eat. Hey, uh, we'll go to the group that's at the Shaman Hut. As you uh, guys walk in, 
Um, the first thing you notice is the strong smell of incense. As you look around, there are multiple things of incense burning. Uh, a lot of like melted candles, and um, you actually see a few candles hanging from uh, the ceiling that are like turned upside down, but they're lit somehow. You don't know exactly like how their function is, and they're they're kind of like burning upside down. Can I do a nature check to see if I'm losing any sense of my senses by like being around these incenses? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Like, if shamans do some fucky stuff with smoke, so I'm just trying to. Just make sure um, she doesn't make a voodoo doll out of you, and you're, you'll be fine. <laughs> it just smells really nice. Yeah, that's really a lot of different of smells, me. though, so you kind of get like yeah. a small headache from it. But you think that's more of just the amount of smells. Um, yeah. Uh, sitting cross-legged on a sort of um, like a tapestry, a uh, giant tapestry that has candles on it and stuff in front of her, uh, you see with a uh, staff laying behind her that has um, another skull on it, another goblinoid skull, uh, you see a very, very old hobgoblin. Uh, the, the skin's kind of gone from uh, some bright reddish that you've seen, like the younger the younger um, ones look to uh, faded like orange with uh, wrinkles. Um, her hair is... Uh, gray fade uh, that goes into um <clears throat> a sort of um black color and uh she kind of looks up and she goes ah i thought i felt new presences in the area the smokes told me about you oh yeah what'd they say they said there were new people coming <laughs> <laughs> oh that like I they didn't tell me like, you. your names or <laughs> i assume it's you well that's <laughs> Astute observation there. Yes, I am Mildred. Oh, wise one. I am Variant. Ah, I'm Amir. I am Caviar. Yeah, the smokes told me about you. Oh, what did they say? They said you were over here in this hut. Ah, <laughs> those little <laughs> bastards they are. Yeah. Uh, why have you come to Caviar's tent? You come for a reading? You know what? Yes. Hell yeah. I do. Do you want a group reading or a one-on-one? -on -one? A one-on-one, -on -one, baby. Yeah. Mm-hmm. gold a pop. <laughs> Listen, you're over in the she, marketplace. She points <laughs> to you, Varian. Mm -hmm. We will do your, yours first. Okay, okay. Sit down in front of me. I sit down, crisscross applesauce. See her lay a few things. She takes out a, a fresh, unburned uh, candle, um, a little cup that she places a few incense in. And mm -hmm. um, she says, she points to like a small circle drawn on the carpet. Place something here, an offering. Something that you do not wish to keep. It will be payment for the reading. Okay, okay. Can I take... Material value or emotional value that will help define the readings suggestions i'm gonna take that uh transparency through scale and put it there okay from the mm. dragon scale she kind of like scratches it with her claw and what is it you wish to see with this scale uh i just want to see you know what happens in two months where will I be in two months? Hmm. That's going to be hard to tell. All right, what do you typically do? I can do many things. I can show you the will of where a creature is. I can show you of vague hints of what may come in the future. We could do the two months thing. Uh, you know the what? fate of a creature or a person. Tell um, me the fate of the tinkerer. Mm. Oh, what do you mean? What exactly do you want with his fate? Where he is? Uh, no, is just a month from now, I want to know if he's still kicking. I don't, I don't even know if he's alive right now. I don't know if it's... So I'm wondering if you could tell me. Mm. I will try my best with the scale. Okay. And she, uh, you see her just wave her hand over the candle and it lights. I need you to make, ooh, let's do a wisdom check. Uh, normal? Yeah. 
What's your total with that? 18. 18. Okay. As you're closing, uh, as you, do you close your eyes? What do you do? Does the shaman tell me to close my eyes? She doesn't tell you to do anything. She starts doing her thing. What do you do? I just stare her dead in the eyes. You see the smoke from the candle starts to grow. It grows bigger. Okay. And bigger. I start looking at the candle. The scale starts to glow. Nice. The lady's just sitting there with her her palms upturned, uh, her eyes closed, her head kind of leaning back, humming to herself. Mm-hmm. Um, you guys watching this don't see anything weird happen. But Varian, the scale grows extremely bright, almost like it's like a beacon. And with a flash, it's gone, and you're blinded. But then your vision returns, and you see the veined blue or the veined white dragon it's sitting on like an iceberg and you haven't you haven't seen the dragon right you've never seen it before no no we just heard it um you see uh large sections of it are turning to crystal and actually as you're watching it you see some of the crystal starts to spread a little bit but then stop like its scales are turning from white to this kind of like Uh-oh. white and blue, <laughs> and it's it's sitting on an iceberg, kind of just staring at something you can't really see. the 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 vision only goes to like twenty feet around it. Okay, and it just sits there staring, and then your vision fades, and you're above the island, the island that you're currently on, which is let me pull up the name of it. Uh, Aries. Uh, Arles. Yeah. Arles. Um, and you zoom into the mountains, and very quickly you're able to see what looks like some sort of fortress, um, metal-type fortress in the mountains, roughly in the location of where the Tinker's location was given. Mm-hmm. Um, and you zoom into a cloaked, uh, black-cloaked figure, hunched over, looking over a desk with various papers with blueprints. Uh, you see their their uh, one of their like arms starts to raise, and it's it's has a bunch of um, robe over it, so you can't really see it. And as it's about to like show itself, your vision just fades, and you're back in the tent. The scale that is was, gone. That was from a month from now. You have no idea. Oh, I have no idea. Yeah, the candle is completely burned down, like it's completely like all burned, Melted. and the, the scale is gone. Oh, that's fucking cool. Ah, uh, I kind of nod. I say thank you for my reading, and uh, I well, like. Thank me. Thank the smoke. Like I said, the smoke brought me here, so I'm glad it did. So I'm going to let somebody else get their reading. I love this shit. It's so good. Who's You're up, Eldrin. Eldrin, now? I will come up. Yeah. I'll say first, do you, can you tell me what this is? And the show, show where his, Puzzle. his arm. Oh, okay. That is a question for the smokes, not for me. Okay. This is smart. Clever boy. <laughs> Eldrin. Finding wise answers. What is it you want your vision to be about? Um. If Paylor is pleased with my work. She kind of looks at you. I don't think you need the smokes to answer that question. Then what can you tell me of my future? Make an offer to the smokes. And she places a new fresh candle. Um... Varian, do you stay in the tent? Today... Is the I'm first day of the rest of your life. Trying to, do I feel woozy? No. Nope. Be nauseous? Fine. I feel okay. I ask everybody if they saw what happened. They didn't see anything. I know. I'm asking. They just saw them. the candle all of a sudden like burn really fast, and then the. But the I'm scale. asking them, Caden, not I know, you. I'm, I'm just telling them what they saw. The candle burned really fast, and then the scale was gone. Yeah, it's just saw that the the scale disappeared. 
Oh man, wait till it's your turn. Make an offering. Uh, Preferably tied to the vision that you wish to see. I don't have anything. Doesn't have to be material worth. It can be emotionally value, valuable, or like a story. Sentimental valuable. <laughs> Something that you're willing to lose or give up. Or you could just put it down with some fucking gold or something. Yeah, I'm gonna put down a, a platinum piece. You don't have anything tied to this vision? Or anything you're willing to part with? A trinket? An oddity you found? An arm. <laughs> Mrs. Eldra not Enix. Oh, a sorry. ring, a bracelet. <laughs> oh, even better. I do not. Let me see. I feel Hold like on. that's a lie. Um, I'm okay. going to offer him the stop, white scale that I have. Stop looking at my character sheet. I'm going to offer him the white scale I have. He offers you the white scale. Okay. So you place that with the platinum? Or do you take the platinum and place the scale there? Take the platinum. I'll take back. take the platinum back. And he hands it to Farian. <laughs> <laughs> you say you worship Palo, is that right? Yes. It is. Uh, she the focuses sm- in her hands and you see a small... Um, well, first you see nothing, and then as she focused, a small symbol of a Paylor. Um, kind of like a small um, statue of Paylor in Light's Embrace. It's probably like um, a few inches tall, and it's not too detailed, but you get the sense of what it is. It's of uh, Paylor during the Summoner's War, or before that time at least, when he still had his armor. And she places it on top of the scale. It represents your faith to him. It might tell Okay. Yes. And she replaces the incense, lights them, and then lights the candle. Does the same thing where her palms are upturned and her head is turned back. What do you do? I'll watch the the uh, the statue that she placed there. Okay. As you watch the statue, you see it's where one of its like loosely defined arms was you all of a sudden see it sprout and it points up and i hear dogs barking in the background i look up yeah, they have war dogs. as you look up wax from the candles dripping drops into your eyes and oh, as that shit. happens your vision goes white and you wake up and you're on a beach oh, let me pull it up so i don't misspell or miss say anything uh Uh, you're on a beach. Uh, sitting up, you look around and you are bathed in blood. And you see the dead bodies of everybody in the group. You see Spike, you see Anubis, you see Amir, you see Ildren, you see Enix, uh, and you see Bruce Lee. Dead around you. Looking up, you see the two moons in the full in their full moons. One of them, uh, to the right, all of a sudden lights fire and starts to burn away. The one on the left that's closer and bigger starts to form cracks and then shatters. And you hear demonic laughing all around you. And as that fire in the uh, sky, which has turned all the light around you orange, burns away into an ember, you are left in complete darkness. And then the, the wax around your eyes cracks and your vision is revealed again. Candles completely burn. Figure and the, pound, and the dragon scale are gone. What was that? I have no idea. That's for you to decide. I simply show you the will of the smokes. The answer lies with you. Not with me. Feels like an Avengers movie. (laughs) (laughs) 
Calm down. You're not the Tony Stark here. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. Lady. Uh, what What's the name of the the person who wants us to kill the Tinker? Oh. <laughs> That's with a K? No. Maybe? A T. Oh, fuck. I totally forgot this one. Ta. T A something. She's on my list somewhere. I have to find her. Talia. Sorry. Talia. Yeah, I believe it's Talia. Talia! <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's not. Talia? Oh, sorry. I remember because it was so close to Talia, which is a League of Legends character. Can can she show me like the relationship between the Tinker and Talia? Ooh. Talia, yeah. what do you offer? Leave it to a mirror to come up with like the best thing. <laughs> like, the oh, best. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Um, yeah, I don't know. Should I do my brass locket or the gold circlet? I want to give yeah, you the uh, that blackness. locked potion that has that changes color. <laughs> <laughs> It would be so bad. It would give you a good ass vision. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Uh, Looking at the two items, the circlet. Just so you know, the circlet is definitely worth more because it's gold and platinum. All right. Okay. What about the just red so vein, you know. mithril ingot? The what? The it's it's nimbuses. It's Anubis's. Why would you give that up? <laughs> it's in my. Well, it's in your bag. <laughs> right, it's in my bag, but it's Anubis's. No, so if gonna, I'm gonna, gonna give gonna, it out, it's his. I was gonna use that for my own vision later. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll hold it on. I think you'll want it, so I'll hold on to it. All right, I'll offer the gold circlet. Okay. She kind of looks at. It, she goes, "That is uh, very valuable." Uh, she replaces the candles. Lights the incense. So, what specifically? You said you were looking for the relationship between the Tinkerer and Talia? Yeah. Okay. Roll a wisdom check. I have to pull up stuff. Ooh, let's go! Oh, okay, okay. I have to see. Hold on, I have to quickly pull up oh everything. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be good. legendary. Oh, Ildra never had a roll wisdom check. Bummer. Yeah, he didn't because of his type of vision. You did because what you asked. It's all all very specific. I see. I see. I see. Um, hey, she go. does the same thing where she puts her hands back, starts humming. Uh, what do you do? I close my eyes. Okay, as you close your eyes, I don't have to do anything weird to make it so you close your eyes. <laughs> uh, the vision comes to you. First, you see a group of automatons walking in the snow. It's a group of about three. They look older than the ones you've seen in the city. And they come across a injured... Uh, I believe she was human, right? Yeah, human girl. Um, you do get the sense, since you rolled a natural 20, that that's Talia on the floor. Um, and they bring her to an iron fortress or a metal fortress in the mountains uh you see the girl again this time she's older she's sitting at the table she's eating food and she looks she looks fine she doesn't look injured but she doesn't look happy she looks a bit miserable um and you just just see standing behind her is that creature uh with the the white sort of scales um with the the lights um, it looks pretty similar to how it does now, maybe a little bit less scars. A few years pass, and you see her kind of uh, sleeping, almost, as the, the white creature is walking um, towards, on top of a mountain, outside of, or walks outside of the uh, the metal fortress, uh, off of, uh, through a gate that's guarded by automatons that look more like the ones you saw in the city. And she or the creature that she's currently passed out on uh walks 
just off into the distance. And then like it cuts to another shot where she's on top of a mountain looking down at Saludia City. And do you see, interesting enough, you don't see the arena actually. And then she walks down and, or you see the creature walk towards the city and it cuts to another um, shot where she's in the basement of the arena, which you haven't seen, but you do see the creature caged up, uh, sleeping, and she's standing on the outside of the cage just looking in. Um, and so when she was found, she didn't have the necklace, but you did notice the necklace. Or you didn't notice, she, when she was found, she didn't have a necklace, um, but you noticed a necklace that was added um, without, it's kind of like a circular silver necklace with an indent, kind of like an indent where you, it looks like something should be, but it isn't. And she's had that since she went to the Metal Fortress. Question. Hmm? The white creature, is it the one that she's using to fight with? Okay. I, for the first moment, I thought it was the dragon. So I just want to double check. Nah. It's that white creature gotcha. with the glowing lights. And you open your eyes. The candle is completely burned. That's your vision. And the offering is gone. So... What, what did she want us to get from the Tinkerer? The purple stone. Purple stone, yeah. With There's no indication of that purple stone at all? She wanted a purple stone with a lock on it. You didn't ask about the purple stone, so... Damn it, Rachel! I tried. But she, she did mention a necklace that had an indent where something yeah. goes, so I'm assuming that's for the purple stone. Yeah, I would assume that as well. Was she, like, still um, not looking good when she was in the basement of the arena? Uh, it's not that she doesn't look good. She just doesn't look happy. Okay. Oh, no, her name's not Talia. It's Azari. Azari. Okay. Oh, uh, way fucking off. Sorry, I had to pull up the map that had her on it. For some reason, I didn't write down her name anywhere else. Remember her by thinking of Queen Ashara. All right, well, Enix is going to this forge place right here. Um, at the at the place with the um, fruit and stuff, I'm gonna walk up to the vendor with the guy and just ha like ask the guy first to to translate, and just be like, um, what? Well, first I'm gonna say to him like, what's your favorite fruit or whatever. Uh, he kind of points at a local one that looks like it's um sort of greenish with spikes coming off of it. You know, it's, uh, it's has a hardy shell protected by spikes, but the interior is a soft, fleshy deliciousness. All right, um, I'm going to ask him to ask the vendor if I could get two of those. Yeah, um, translates, and she says, uh, "It is like a um, it's actually a man, uh, kind of like a short, younger-looking hobgoblin." Um, he sees yes, he communicates the price. It's going to be uh, five copper for two. Okay, yep. So you get two spiked green fruit. Okay, and then I'm going to hand one to the guy and share with me. Yeah. Uh, he kind of he thanks you and then uh, takes a knife and opens it up. And it's uh, kind of like a yellow mangoish colored inside. Uh, takes out the seed and starts eating it. Am I able to just like pop it in half instead of check. cutting it. Right. Um, it takes a little bit and you um, kind of hurt your hands on the spikes a little bit. They have been trimmed down so they're not like super spiking. Uh, but you're able to do it and it's not as clean as a cut. And then I'm uh, just so going to pull up the seed like, like he did. And... Asymmetrical chunks. Weird chunks all right well I'm, it, yeah, it i'll tastes, pull it whatever i can and... it tastes similar to meat but it's not meat <laughs> and it's kind of like a weird fruit texture too or like meat texture but like a, it's a very interesting flavor we've never had it before but it tastes good okay so this is what you vegetarians eat huh tastes uh, just like the I good just, stuff. it makes a good snack but you eat too much and uh you might put on a few pounds if you know what i mean <laughs> All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk with him and say, "Come, friend, and we'll we'll go to the clother." Yeah. Kind of has all the clothes or whatever. What is uh Enix doing? He's coming here to see. Like, was this a blacksmith or? 
Um, it's a forge. You see four, or you see three hobgoblins working at it, each in their own like kind of like station that shares the same fire. Okay. But they're each. <clears throat> they all seem to be working. Right. Hello. You selling stuff here? Uh, you see one of them look behind you, and he goes, kind of speaks to the other ones and goblin. Be right back. Uh, he kind of points to one of the tents when he goes back to working. Which which tent did he point to? Uh, he pointed to that. Uh, you walked up to that one. He points to that one. I don't. I didn't see the one that's next to it. The yeah. That one. Oh, this one. Okay. The one I'll, that I pinged twice. I will go in there. Oh. Going in there, you see. Actually, what's your passive perception? Um. Fifteen. Make a perception check. Seventeen. As you're walking around and going to the entrance of the tent, um, you look towards the markets and you see kind of in like a small crowd. Or after a small, like, three-person crowd had just walked by, um, there's a, a, a figure standing staring at you. You have no idea what, if they're male or female, and their face is covered by kind of like a half-white, half-orange mask that kind of has, like, a weird line in between it. Um, their hands are wrapped in, like, gloves, so you can't, you can't make out, like, any features of this figure. But as soon as they notice that you see them, uh, they quickly dash off into the, or dash off into the market. Okay, I'll see if I can follow him. Make a perception check. <laughs> You're going to get pretty high on this. <laughs> 15. You run up to the edge of the market and you just look around and you can't see anything. You have no idea where they went. Do I notice anybody running through the market? No. I would say no. Okay. You go back to the tent, Phoenix? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Walking inside, you see a... Um, you actually see a goblin. Not a hobgoblin. A regular goblin. And he, he is currently um, sitting on a table. Like, just sitting on the table, cross-legged. Just scribbling into a book. Looks up. Ah! I may help you. I, I thought I heard about some new people coming in town. Yes, uh, you you selling stuff from the forge, or what do you uh, do? Yeah, guess you could say I sell stuff. Okay, sure. I don't know what that means. I I just keep track of like who takes arms and who doesn't take arms. You know all that like military stuff when we're in fights, but since we're not in one right now, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but yeah, I can I can sell to outsiders. I'm allowed to do that. The name is Lax. Lax? Lax. L-A-X. Lax. I'm Dragonborn. Um, they call me Enix. Uh, okay, I was about to say that's a really weird name for... You know, it'd be like if I was Goblin. You are <laughs> Goblin. kind of weird. <laughs> I, what? You don't tell people that? What are you looking for? I don't know. What do you got? <laughs> Roll a persuasion check. Nineteen. Kind of looks you up and down. He hops off the table, and he closes the tent flat. Oh, you better get frisky, bro. Um. He speaks to you in thieves can't. Oh, nice. He says, "Uh, you probably don't want any of that like basic shit, do you?" No. Next day, as with the smile. Uh, uh. I function as the stockkeeper here, but I also uh, carry a few um, illegal goods within most empires. <laughs> Those are the best kind. Some of the some of the guards here uh, are into some weird shit. So, 
What are you asking? Well, what kind of wares? <clears throat> what kind of wares you got? Uh, I got weapons, armor, potions, uh, drugs. If you're into that. <laughs> uh, none of none of that. But uh, look, man, can I show you something? I mean, it's gonna show. It was no. Oh fuck. <laughs> uh, uh, I have some stuff that will like help with like uh, if your dick can't get hard in bed if you're having that problem that might I don't know Yeah, I don't know how to deal with a fucked up hand yeah well, I get that what about uh, like what kind of weapons you got um I got a few uh, daggers I also have poisons too. Yeah, got, That's a pretty illegal. Yeah, I got. Uh, I, he takes out um. Well, it up. He takes out a small chest from. Um, you see him go under the table, and you hear a latch, or you hear him move a carpet, and then like the latch opens. It's the first out, day uh, of a pretty the sizable rest of chest that he's able to lift up and put on the table. Uh, this is where I keep keep the good shit. So, <clears throat> you're looking for weapons. What else? Uh, what, what kind of armor you got? Uh, armor, I, I don't... Um, actually, yeah. He takes out a, uh, a piece of uh, studded leather armor and he places it down. That's uh, a little bit better than your average stuff you find. Uh, daggers, he takes out two daggers and he places them down. What are these daggers? Uh, he takes out a few potions, some green. Um, this one is a, uh, a plus one. Well, this one's a dagger that will cut sharper than usual. It's a plus one dagger. Okay. And then the other one, let me look it up real quick. So I don't. Uh, this one uh, can do a, a bit more damage when you uh, uh, surprise somebody. Or you can choose to cut yourselves. And uh, make it a uh, a little bit stronger. I'm not into I'm not into that self mutilation stuff. Ah, some people are. Okay, he takes that one. Hmm. The armor uh, will protect you against uh, the blows a little bit better than your average armor, and it gives a a nice little boost against frost. Hmm. Hey, man, I got speaking of frost. He shows him the ring. Today what, can you is take the off? first day of the rest of your life. Well, that's, 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 check. that's, that's the problem. Check. <laughs> you want to try to take it off? Nope. <laughs> See? <laughs> that's the problem. Ah. Well, I just cut off that hand like you did the other one. Yeah, it's uh like like you know that self mutilation thing. I tried it once, obviously. I didn't like the after effects. Hmm. Well, if you can't take it off, there's nothing I can do about it. So, d could I wear this armor being a thief? Because right now I have it's no. plus one leather armor with cold resistance. Oh, it's plus it's one leather. Studded, yeah, yeah. Studded leather. So it's twelve plus your dex plus one. Um, yeah. How much? How much for the armor? That one's going to be a little bit pricey. 1,500 gold. Oh, that is pricey. But I do trade. And I heard that you have a group. So they're with you. You yep. come in here with them, I'll, I'll show them my goods. Just don't tell anybody. Trade one of the group? Who do you want? <laughs> I'm thinking if they have, like, shit that you, they want to sell, I can... I, I work on trade, okay? Oh, okay. Um, see, see, the guards come to me when they want something a bit better than their average blade. The blacksmiths here are good, but... Well, I got this, uh... See this stone acorn? Ooh. I'm not a squirrel. I know I'm small, but... No, but it's, uh, it's magic. Magic nuts? Okay. What does it do? He kind of takes it. Um... Oh, uh, it'll, you know, you ever get chased by guards? No. Imagine you did. Okay. 
You need oh. to you need to get away quickly. Yeah. You need to get somewhere where they wouldn't find you. Well, throw this down, a tree sprouts up. You're oh. hidden in a tree. Uh. And they wouldn't be suspicious by the random tree that just grew. Guards are pretty stupid. Waste of Roll persuasion check. Ones I've dealt with. Six. Um, three hundred fifty gold for this. Four hundred fifty if you're trading it towards an item. Hmm. What about? Uh, I wish I could. Wish I could get this. Uh, try to get this ring off. This ring's pretty awesome. No, just, I guess my finger swelled and it won't come off. Lick it, try again. That sucks, you can only try once a day. Uh-huh. Um, you had like three days of travel, you could have tried to take it off, but you decided not to. Yeah, I forget every day. Let me see if I got anything else in my... My backpack that may be worth. He also has a few potions too. Oh, I got this book. What does it do? I look at it. You know about you know those people trying to make their dick card. Well, this book will do it. What book do you offer him? The porn book from. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> What is it again? What exactly is it? It's the porn book from the, from the... No, just the... Oh, no, yeah, it's the, the it's porn the, book that the Ganassi had. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is very rare. 30 gold for that. We don't get a lot of that around here. Come on, man. It's worth 100 at least. Natural one, so he's gonna, he's gonna give you. <laughs> Alright, so get, round it up to 50. 50 if you're trading for an item. Okay. So I'm up to 500 right now, right? 500 of store credit, yeah. <laughs> and then check this out. He pulls out his uh, the broken Gith, Gith Yankee short sword. Uh, that's a broken sword. I don't know how much that's gonna catch you. Yeah, but look, look at the look what it's made out of. This kill uh, is strong enough to kill the mind flare. I mean, any really blade is strong enough to kill them. They're not too difficult. Um, mm, I broke the... Well, it's a mixture of adamantite and iron. So it's kind of a... It explains the break. Uh, not worth too much. I can give you a 10 gold, 20 if you're trading. That's it. You're not helping me. <laughs> it's... What, it's... About, what about this? He shows him his pink crystal necklace he got from the Underdark? It's a shell. Some sort of animal or creature. All right. You are Location. smart. For... I mean, I lived in the Underdark for like a while before I came here. I didn't really like uh, my life constantly being threatened by a bunch of shit that lived down there, so I moved. Like, what kind of animal would you say? Not a good one. <laughs> I just know it's a shell because you can see where it connected to the skin right here. See? And he points to like where some ligaments were torn off. Or... What, what would you give me for this? Uh, it's not really worth anything. Alright. I mean, not I don't do a make necklace. A suit of armor. It does make a nice necklace. It does. <laughs> Alright, well, you ain't helping me much, man. I got this poison. This is my last. Uh, poison? What is it? Spider bite poison is what you call it. How much damage does it do? It is uh, 46 for one attack oh. and a DC of... Or a constitution check of 14. This is some rare shit, man. Like... 
That's some pretty good poison, spider bite. I, I have a few bottles. Or I have like two bottles. Um, 200 gold or... Yeah, 200 if you're for gold and then 250 if you're trading or something. So you're up to... 750. Yep. Yeah, 750. Or right. 770. For the porn oh, book, yes. too. What if, yeah. you, know, porn book, yeah. well, you gave me 30. Yeah, a lot so of porn out here, so... 780. 780 for 30. Oh, yeah, 780. All right. Tell you what, I'll, I'll show you my my armor that I have. Just regular leather armor. Okay. Plus all that stuff. The magic tree maker. Got it. The, the book. All that stuff. Plus 50 platinum. For the armor. 780, 50, that's 1,380. Or, well, with your bonus stuff. What were you giving him? The the platinum, the stuff, and then the armor, and what else? The Born armor, the, the acorn, the, the... Short sword thingy. Yeah. Mm. Roll persuasion check. Ten. You rolled above him, which he rolled a seven. <clears throat> so, uh, deal. All right. He takes the money, he takes the items, and he slides you the studded leather. So it's studded leather plus one with cold resistance, which is what your ring does. But now you don't have to suffer other effects. <laughs> well, once you get it off. <laughs> yeah. Once you get it off. Okay. So that... don't tell anybody about this. Your group's fine if they're with you, but if they're not with you, I'm not gonna show them my shit. No, no, no. I don't even know if I want to tell them because, you know, I like to have. They're gonna have business with me. I would prefer you tell them. All right, yeah, that's that's fair. So it's a, so it's twelve, so thirteen total. Thirteen plus your decks. Plus my decks. Yep. Nice. Bump me up. All right. Well, thank you, my friend. Yep. Is there? Any uh, good wares in this place that I'm at now? The clothing shop has some has basic clothes, some nicer, nothing like you would wear to like a party or anything. Well, maybe like, you would wear to a party because you're <laughs> <laughs> lived in the tribe. But yeah, it just has basic clothes. Okay, and then what other shops were there again? Trinkets. What about the trinkets shop? Uh, the trinkets has various uh, more child has children's to clothes. It has some basic jewelry. Um, it's about like just random trinkets, and then they have like basic goods around the market too. Anything you would find in a general store. All right. you could is that get. the is that the only blacksmith seller, or is this guy this tent up here another one? Oh, you don't know. Uh, I'm gonna head to that tent. See, or actually, I'm gonna ask the guard. Is there any other sellers besides this tent? We don't really have sellers. No, oh, that's the goblin's voice. We don't really have sellers. Uh, we have. Uh, he's the inventory keeper. He's a goblin named Lax. He's the closest you can get to a blacksmith seller. Uh, the other one there, that's for like the quest and stuff for soldiers. So, um, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna go. Do they? Do you think they'll do requests for somebody else? Uh, no. This okay. is for like uh, times of war, in camp stuff, mm. locals, you know. All right. Well, I'm gonna go. I guess I'll go to the blacksmith. As you go there, you see Enix exiting it. Hey, buddy. Uh, anything good in there? Um, yeah, hold on. Let me go in and introduce you to the fella. All right, I'm going to... you I'm tell the guard say, to wait uh, outside? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be <laughs> like, oh, I'll go in with him. You're fine, so... All right, uh, I'll just... You know, let you have, I'll watch your animal. Thanks. All right, I'll go in and... Oh, wow, well, you're back soon. Oh, fuck. I expect... Oh. Uh, hey, I just wanted to tell you, this is, this is one of my friends. Take care of him. i pat him on the back, but we'll see you later. What do you, what do you want? What do you need? Uh, yeah, what do you got? I, you said you got some cool well, stuff. Well, you're with, you're with Enix, and I'm sure he told you. Uh, I deal in illegal goods. Nothing's uh, illegal unless it's with, you know, 
right cause, I guess. What What are you looking for? I got a variety. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, well, first of all, can you tell me anything about my uh, stuff I've got? And then I pull out the sword and just like hold it there, see if he. Because I, I mean, I didn't hear, but Adam he knows about the adamant. So. Uh, yeah, that's adamant. I know your friend had a. And he actually takes out the sword that he bought from him. Uh, it, that one's a lot better. It's pure adamantite, so it's uh, a lot stronger. It's not going to break as easily. It probably won't ever break, actually, on you. Um, Where does one find something like this? Uh, uh, I've heard rumors of meteors having them in them. Meteors. That's where I know to get some. Uh, okay. We don't get that in here a lot, so... Okay. And it's extremely difficult to melt down and forge. So wherever you got this blade from must have uh, had some powerful equipment. Um, okay. Well, I heard you got some potions. What are the what, what ah, kind yes. of potions you got? Uh, he pulls out. Uh, he has um a basic. Uh, he has a few basic healing potions. Uh, two greater healing potions. Uh, one supreme healing potion, or one superior healing potion, not supreme. One superior healing potion. Um, and then a few other potions of various colors. That you don't recognize. Um, I'll ask him about the various colors, and then I'll ask how much the supreme potion or the superior potion is. Oh uh, yeah, let me look up. Uh, the superior is going to be uh, one thousand five hundred gold. Okay, and what are these other potions? Uh, the graders are going to be uh, 200, and the healing are going to be 50 gold. Just the basic healing ones are 50. And what are these other colors? Uh, well, we have... Where did my potion list go? $5 million. Two. <laughs> 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 A ride to my secret mansion on another <laughs> island. Uh, this potion over here uh, will allow you to breathe like a dragon. Uh, this one right here will give you resistance to poison. Oh, sorry. That one will give you immunity to poison for an hour. Uh, this one over here will allow you to water breathe for eight hours. Okay. Um, I'm going to... How much is the water breathe and how much is the... What's the first one you said? The uh, fire, fire breath. Yeah. Uh, the water breathe one is going to be 500 gold. And the potion of fire breath. Is going to be uh, 1,000 gold. Okay. Um, you know, I'm just going to... I'm, I'm going to... First of all, I'll say, hey, um, before we make any deals or whatever, uh, come take a look outside real quick, man. Just have him peek out well, and uh, see if he knows anything about Spike since he's lived in the Underdark. Uh, yeah, that's a bullet. Usually they all have crystals on their back, and usually they're trying to kill you. Do you know, do you know why uh, he's got crystals on his back? Uh, let me go look closer. Uh, they don't look natural. Like, built? Or they don't look natural to his species. Mm. They look like crystals you'd find in the Underdark. Okay. Do they look like they, they were grown, or that they were... I don't formed? know about that. I'm not really a crystal specialist. That's alright, I just wanted to see. Thanks for your time, and we'll walk back in, and then um, I will see how much... Well... You know, I'm going to sit down and uh, uh, care for a drink, and I'll make him a drink. No. Uh, what are they like? Starts cold. Um, oh, uh, so, oh uh, no. Actually, I'm going to I'm gonna give him a little bit of that fancy stuff we got. Give oh, him a couple of that fancy yeah. stuff. This is some fancy shit you have right here. Wow, we, we should have your, outside, uh, your type of outsiders here more often. <laughs> oh, you know, yeah, I learned from the best, so. And then um, I'll just uh, act like I knew how to make it because I don't. But um, and then uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say uh, so. 
what kind of deals did you give my friend over there? Uh, well, I take trade. I don't just take gold. Okay. Okay. So, um, that's really all. Trying to see if I have anything worth trading. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Amir, make a perception check. You know, that's fine. I'll just say, I'll just say, you know what? I'll just, I'll take the, uh, I'll take the potion of the underwater for 500 and I'll just hand him five platinum. It's 50 platinum. For... I mean, sorry, um, 500 gold. That's what I'm going to say. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Y'all crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, we're gonna go. Much. We're gonna go to the water thing, and I, I know they'll figure some out. But if something happens to whatever they figure out, I'd rather be safe. No, I I see you. I see you there. She got a twenty-three. Um, you notice where the guards are standing, right behind them, almost like a shift. In the ground, like somebody was making a footstep, but there was nobody there. I don't uh, get the roll either. Yeah, you can actually you can roll for perception. Interesting. Because you have a high passive, you would know. You would notice this too. Okay, okay, okay. You roll high. Advantage? No advantage. Uh, advantage because you're in the mountains. Oh. The only bad thing about this is you get advantage on basically everything. <laughs> and you notice it too. So then. <laughs> The guards don't seem to notice it. Yep. I uh, can I focus on where I see the footsteps moving? It goes. It went from like here to across the tent or across like the entrance. It moved across. Yeah. That's where Enix was. Um. This that would have been this would have happened before Enix got there. Okay. How far away are we? That was probably like forty-five feet. Uh, does the f footsteps start to move? Uh, you notice them move, and then they went behind the cloth wall. That's up there, and so you don't know. Can I follow it? Sure. Make a perception check. Or investigation. Make an investigation check. I'm, I'm going to start heading over to the uh, shaman now. The, yeah. the... Uh, as you start moving, the guards follow you, and then they follow. Jeez, killing it. Killing it. <laughs> uh, yeah, you notice them. Um, you see them run, like, behind a tree. And they don't leave the tree. But you saw them run behind it, so. Or you saw uh, the how... footsteps go behind a tree in the grass. How far away am I from them now? Um, you probably you followed them around here, and they hid, like, behind that set of trees. Uh, am I within 10 feet of them? If you move up close to them, yeah. Okay. You can be. I want to move up close to them. Okay, you're within 10 feet now. All right, and then I'm going to um, use my necrotic shroud. Fuck. Okay. <laughs> uh, what do they do with that? <laughs> they have to roll. Uh, I'll put it in chat. What's your charisma modifier? It is 12 or 1. I don't know. It's plus 1. Yeah, plus 1. So the DC is 12. Okay. And then, okay, they failed. Dude, that's scary. Uh. Yeah, you would see the figure start to run away from you again because they're scared. Actually, hold on. Let me check something. Do I see what they are? Wait, hold on. No, they don't start running. Actually, they don't. So yeah, you just see you don't see anything move from behind the tree. 
Um, can I say, like, show yourself? <laughs> Make a persuasion check. She gets another nat 20, I'll cry. Oh, I was almost an 18. <laughs> um, yeah, nothing happens. What do you guys do when uh, Amir ran off? Um, I'm going to go into the shaman and uh, uh, I'm following her. See what's up. Okay, you follow her. You're easily able to keep up with her. But like, I stay back. I give her a space because she's a woman. She's independent. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, she's got these demon wings popping out of her. <laughs> yeah, you do see her her skeletal wings extended. Um, I like walk over to them. Hey, you go around the tree. You don't see anything there. Uh. Nope, stand by, everybody. I just closed the call. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry. Uh, Never had this problem in Discord. That was my fault. He exited us. I did. What does this button do? Oh, if I can interrupt the flow of the story button. Cool. All right. Um, interrupt the flow of the story button. You see, about ten feet away from you, a figure reveals himself, and it's you've never seen this person before, but it is a figure in a half white, half orange mask. Um, completely wrapped. You can't even tell what gender. You can't tell what gender the person is. Um, but they kind of just stare at you, and they start walking back with their arms folded. Was that for me? I yeah, missed that like, was half you. of it. I missed so you, half of it. You've never seen this uh, figure like this before, but you recognize it. Or you, you've never seen anything like this, but you as a person, as Rachel, recognize this as the, the half a, a masked figure with a uh, half um, white half orange mask. I can't tell what gender the body is, and the hands are wrapped. Uh, you can barely tell if it's even a hobgoblin or not. And they're walking away from the tree. Uh, they're looking at you, arms folded, walking away. They just unturned, invisible. Um, I yell out to them to stop. Uh, as soon as they get about fifteen feet away from you, they're gonna turn and then they start running. Use your whole person. What? You have a thing to oh, hold people in place. That's right. But I didn't let you far. use before. No, I think it's no, 20 feet. Can, yeah. I, can I hold them? Uh, what's the distance? Let me see. She does have wings out. She could. She can't fly, though. She can't oh. fly. They're like snake wings. Let me scare you, wings. My internet's super slow. Yeah, for some reason you're you're, you're lagging a little bit. Uh, sixty feet yeah. is the range. Yeah, you could. Okay. What type of saving throw do they gotta make? Wisdom saving throw. What's your spell save? Do you see? Should be seventeen. Uh, they continue to run, and they're running fast. Um, you see them like they start running and they're not running super fast and all of a sudden something happens and they start running faster uh, but they don't appear to be affected Just... by your spell like they have resisted it dang um, and they kind of like run off and they hop across the lake and you don't really see anybody across. else nobody else appears to be like like you see them run past some blacksmiths and the blacksmiths don't even like pay attention to them I tell Varian to shoot him. <laughs> Varian, she Don't tells you to shoot him. <laughs> Don't cause trouble. Are the guards seeing this shit happen? What are the guards doing? 
just from like <laughs> passive observation. They're they're looking at you. They don't right, seem to maybe don't shoot them. They don't give a shit about Amir, but they care about me. <laughs> they're looking at you guys, is what I meant. Like, there's one looking at you. Like, they're not mad that she's, like, casting spells and shit like that? Like, they're not trying to stop her? From where they were, they couldn't really see that she was casting a spell. Because uh, they were looking at her back. I mean, they noticed the wings, and they looked kind of, like, off-put by that. But I think the wings kind of distracted them from any spell casting. Especially since it's it's not like a... Like, cold person isn't, like, a guiding bolt where you see something happen you kind of it kind of just like subtly happens so if you're not the target it's usually going to be difficult to determine that uh but they appear off put by the wings <laughs> you want me to shoot them you want me to shoot this person that's running away this is also a guard yeah. that you're that was not speaking common so you don't know if they understand common which might work in your benefit. <laughs> Up to you. Uh, I'm going to... Do I see the person? Um, They're starting to get away pretty fast. Like, are they still within 60 feet? Not within 60 feet, no. They're, like, probably... Let me look up something... If, it, if he's within 120 feet, I'm booking it. I'm trying to catch him. They're probably within like 130 feet. I'm booking it. I'm trying to catch him. Okay. With advantage. I'm just going to straight up tell you, uh, by the way they're running, they're running way faster than you. So you know that you wouldn't be able to catch up to this person. I just, I would say, if Varian would know that like, if you want to do a full-on chase with this person... Unless you're aided by something magical, probably not going to be able to physically keep up with it. What's the max range on a bow? <sighs> uh, it's no, don't three, shoot. It's, they're within range, yeah. They're definitely within range of your bow. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to roll a sleight of hand check here. So this to this fucking... fire your bow. <laughs> your so bow. This, this tree that's right here. So I'm, I'm assuming this dude's running up like this way, right? Yeah, they're probably just across the lake, like right there. Like right here? Okay, yeah. perfect. So I'm going to get just behind the tree enough to where I think the guards can't see me. And then I'm just going to like Patrick Mahomes that shit. Just and like shoot it at his ankles. Uh, are you releasing all three shots? Hmm? No, just one. Okay. You So you walk up, make a stealth check. And then is Amir doing anything to help you? <laughs> I'm very interested in how this goes. <laughs> a stealth check? Distract him. Yeah, Amir like, helping me? No. Yeah. She can could I, turn and like, I, like face them with the wings. Can I fly towards them? Yeah. You can't fly track. towards them. No. You can run towards them. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah, the guard is uh, uh, currently, you see them kind of like, you see them turn and start motioning for the other guards, but you assume that's because what you can tell this guard does not speak common. They are one mm -hmm. of the few that only speak goblin. So you assume that's why they're getting. So as they turn to motion for the other guard, you shoot your shot. Roll to hit with advantage. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> this is awesome. This is awesome. You roll damage. Get him in the leg. As you shoot them. <laughs> uh, the arrow shoots, they turn, and they catch your arrow. Ooh, damn. Do I lock what? eyes with them? Like no, in that moment? Do... They're wearing a mask. And I, I shoot a second shot. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> roll the hit. Or, no, I, I gotta, yeah, roll the hit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, let's see, I have to see if they can do anything. Uh, yeah, roll damage. We got an echo from somebody. I'm not trying to hurt him, so this is perfect. It's rolling low for me. Uh, I mean, if you're you're not trying to hurt him, but you're still like doing damage. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, that's that's hits them in the the leg. Um, and you see that you can't see any expression from them, but they snap your arrow. And then they turn and start running again. 
at, at the same brisk speed, like they didn't lose any momentum. Mm-hmm. Roll um insight check. Just roll an insight check. I feel like that was a bad idea, honey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you recognize? You've seen people do this thing before. You've seen Bruce Lee do it before. Oh, he misses. They seem like out, they're. Right? They seem not missy step. They seem like they're monks or a monk. The way they caught the arrow, the way they're running faster than you. You've seen Bruce Lee run faster than you somehow. There's he's just able to like power his body more. At least I think we're getting an echo on on me. So. Yep. Uh, okay, so at that point in time, I uh, I just kind of look at my bow now, and I'm just kind of fiddling with the twine as like the guards come around. I'm just looking at it. Uh, yeah, you see the guard come around. He goes, uh. We, sorry, um, uh, the wings disappear as he comes, or he comes around, he sees the wings, but then they disappear. He goes, uh, I would advise you don't do th- that. Oh, what am I doing? The, the wings. Uh, oh, yeah, her, yeah. it happens. It's actually completely random. Roll, roll deception. <laughs> <laughs> With advantage, because you're in the fucking mountains. <laughs> I don't even know if you get advantage for being in the mountains, but I'm just going to give it to you because Ranger sucks. But, uh, uh, well, natural one. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Um. Well, if that happens, just get away from any crowds or any large groups of people. Oh, we, we always do, sir. I apologize. She just gets a little, you know, women. That's why she's back there. Oh, I'm not there. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. <sighs> so, uh, well, sorry to bother you, but I'll just go back to keeping. Watch. No, that was a complete fair assessment there. We'll cut to Anubis uh, while this is happening. Anubis, what are you doing? You walk into the the uh, shaman lady. She goes, "Ah, I knew there were more in the group. Three seemed like a small number." Phoenix is there as well. And Dragonborn. I am Dragonborn. I, I see that. I am old, but I am not blind. Um, I'm going to sit down and ask her if she can read me. Yes. What is the offering you place forth? Put that red vein mithril. Ooh. And then I'm also going to um, say, I don't know if this might help, but I think for some reason I have a feeling that Holding holding my hand might help you in this vision. What is it you are trying to see? I'm trying to see what this thing inside me is, or what I might be able to do with it. She holds out her hand. And I uh, just lightly, you know, place my hand in hers. Uh, she lights the candle, lights incense. She puts on a fresh candle, lights it. Um, do you close your eyes? What do you do? Um, yeah, but as I do, I don't know, I have this urge to turn the sword on fire as well while I'm sitting there. Like this um, the sword is warm. And you close your eyes and vision comes to you, similar to the one you had last time. You're looking at this village with a, a mix of races with you, and you kind of give, in a language you don't understand, you the, the giant flaming body that is kind of like it looks kind of like an ember, like it's fire that's been dimmed. Um, they give a few orders in a language you don't understand. And you see groups move around the city. And um, you pick up the sword and it lights fire and you charge into the city. And as as the sword lights fire, the body kind of sparks up and that lights fire and becomes brighter. And just the first house, which this body is massive, it's almost three times the size of this house, just swings his sword or their sword, but the body is looks male, um, through the house, and it just gets destroyed. And then another, and another, and it just is running down the main street of this village, just doing that. And then it flashes forward to what you assume is the end of the battle. You see a few of your troops that you gave orders to are dead, some of them injured, but you're sitting in the middle of the town, and you just stab the sword through the earth, and it kind of like shatters the earth, and it breaks apart, 
and cracks start to form and the earth or the sword goes deeper deeper and deeper and then you open your eyes as the vision ends do i feel anything you feel a warm sense inside of you but you can't determine what if it's good or bad but the myth the mithril ingot the red vine mithril ingot is gone well i never gave it to him well i assume it's his so i assume he had it (laughs) (laughs) um okay and you dragonborn what do you want I want to know if I ever get my hand back. <clears throat> or if this t- tinker fellow is going to help me. I think that all depends on how you approach them. Yeah, thanks, lady. Is there anything else you want to see? A specific vision? A general idea? Just just about your hand or anything else? Yeah, pretty much my, my hand. That's what I, you know... That's what I'm focused on right now. Mm. Okay, what are you what are you offering? <laughs> I'll pull out my hand. <laughs> <laughs> I offer you my other your, hand. Your cut off hand? Yep. <laughs> yeah, that one's gross. Huh? Okay, it's kind of like a few fingers fall off because it's charred and old as fuck. Yeah. Uh oh, that's uh Yeah, that's pretty sentimental. Okay. Yeah, I've very. Had, I've had West. I've had it with me my whole life. <laughs> Not much use to me now, though. It's funny because it's true. Right. Well, make a wisdom check. <laughs> uh, wisdom save or just a check? Just a check. Okay. What do you do? I watch what she's doing. Her hands are palms face up. Um, her eyes are closed. She's humming to herself. I'm gonna look at my hand that's sitting there in the offering plate. You see the fingers reattach to the hand, like they start vibrating and then they go back to the hand, and then it closes, and you fall asleep. As you sleep, you dream of Avantharan, kind of like a, a top view of it again. And you zoom down, and you're in um, some sort of mm, monastery or temple. And you see a young human woman, woman, and she's uh, currently sparring. Uh, she has like a stick, and she's sparring with a, a dark elf, a drow. Um, and she kind of like uh, hits... And like they're deflecting, and then all of a sudden, uh, the the human woman, her her stick, the end of it lights on fire, and the other end sparks with ice. And she does two more strikes. Uh, the one disarms uh, the dark elf, and the other scoops under and knocks her prone. And then she says something, but you don't hear anything. And she helps the woman back up. And you hear a name. Allura. Okay. And then the vision ends. And the hand is gone. Well, you can't have it anymore. Well, the broken hand, not the not his other hand. Well, no, it was ever, if it was ever going to come back to life like the Adams family, it's gone now. I was, uh, who was that lady? I, I don't know. I don't like the will of the spokes, man. I don't know. Like, you don't see what we see? No. Nope. I don't believe you. I think you do. So tell, who, who is she? What does Allura mean to you? Uh, uh, that's a, sounds like a human name. Okay. That was strange. Why couldn't you have just stopped it when my hand went back together? Then maybe you could have put it on. Uh, I didn't see your hand. My eyes were closed. Hmm. Well, I don't understand your. You have paid me, so magic. service isn't done. Wait, that was payment. You took my hand as payment. The the offerings you give are payments for the will of the smoke, and that is all the payment that I require and that they require. 
So you take tips. Uh, sure. I mean, yeah. All right. Just wondering. <laughs> I'll give her a gold piece, actually. Ah, thank you. Kind of just starts chewing on it. Eh, yeah, it's real. Okay. Oh uh. uh, yeah. All right. I say we go rest and head out. Well, as you walk out, you see a group of guards heading towards front of the the shaman's hut. Um, they see you and they go, uh, "Where is uh, your your friend with the bow?" You actually see um, leading the group of guards is uh, Shar. Can I hear this? Roll perception check with advantage. Uh, yeah, you hear them. You hear her say that. I get in my fucking in my invisible room. It's rope a portable trick. hole. You can see they can see the entrance, can't they? I can pull the rope in. Okay. That's Roll what it says. Check something. to see if you can do this fast enough before any guards come around and see you. I'll be like, I got a bow. Is this are you talking about me? Look, man. Not a human I, one. I bought. Oh. I bought... Uh, as you're climbing in, you see one of the guards turns and he sees you and he goes, hey, "He's over here." And she goes. Oh. Uh, uh, guards arrest these two. Uh, <laughs> he goes around. To who? To you, sir. Yeah, he, they, the guards uh, walk up with manacles. I run. They... <laughs> what? You run? I run! Okay. Not again, dude! Fuck this! I, I run. <laughs> Roll initiative. <laughs> yeah, you're not arresting me. I don't know. You're you're just the guard says you're just gonna be brought in for questioning. It doesn't mean you're actually gonna be arrested, but we need to question you. No, you don't. Okay. Tell you what, you can question me without putting handcuffs on me. Do you say that to her? I say yeah. It don't like I say like I haven't done anything wrong. Like don't put handcuffs on me. Black lives matter. <laughs> uh, she has manacles. She says you are under arrest by the order of the chief. So I am under arrest. Yes. Brought in for to be brought in for questioning. So I'll just tell you, tell you what. I'll put the bow away, and I'll just yeah. walk with you. Hold on. <sighs> One second. I have uh, bad luck with handcuffs. Uh, she walks up to you and she punches you in the side. Roll a constitution saving throw. She punches me in the side? Yeah, she punches you in your side. Where is our initiative here? <laughs> you stopped battle. and she, Okay, so she walks up to you. She's punching you in the side. Roll a constitution saving throw. Oh, that's wrong. Oh. Not with advantage. The what first one. Anyway. Okay. Well, we'll take the one on the left. Uh, she's okay. going to hit you again. Roll a constitution saving throw. She's got a few of these. 21. Okay, she's going to hit you a third time. Roll a constitution saving throw. Am I not able to fucking move? Uh, she, this is one round for her. <laughs> okay, you are all of a sudden, your body is stunned, and she just handcuffs you. I said, I demand to talk to Bruce Lee. <laughs> you are cause stunned. Because I, I know Bruce Lee is here. <laughs> um, You also take... Damage. <laughs> uh, how much does her do at that level? You take twenty-three points of damage total. Holy shit! <clears throat> That's a heavy punch. Um. So I'm talking to her, and then she just punches. Yeah, you become shit. Un you become unstunned. No, but we're having like a civil conversation, and you she know, walks like up and hits me. That's what she did. Okay, well, you know, this is why people have a problem with the police. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Amir, guards guidance. are gonna try to arrest you. Do you let them? I uh, sure. All right, there yeah. you go. They just manacle you. Uh, Anubis, guards are gonna try to arrest you. Do you let them? Me? Has everybody let the guards manacle them? I'm over here, right? Yeah, they walked into the... As soon as you walked out of the tent. And I don't know what's going on, right? Yeah, I don't... they just said we're bringing you in for questioning. 
Um, I don't. I don't understand. Is I've it the? Is it the wrong. guard that? Don't I've ask been... questions, okay? You're just gonna get your ass fucking whooped. Is it the guy? Is it the guard that I've been walking around with? You see one of them, yeah. He's there. Um, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna be like, can I ask what this is about, please? Uh, one of your group has attacked uh, an important member. Um, so we're gonna bring you in for questioning. Oh, well, they're idiots, so sure. Okay. And then, Thank and you then, for not resisting. That sure as, well. as they put, put it on, for you. can I can I do a, a strength test just to see if I accidentally break the monocles? Yeah, sure. Well, strength Today test. is the first day of the rest I'm of I'm really the sorry. Yes, as you um, put it in, it's just, yeah, we're I'll not used to people you. of your size. It's mainly hobgoblins here. Uh, just bound his hands with rope. I think that will do. And they'll do that yeah, sure, again. sure. So they, uh, everybody. Hey, don't, don't hurt my spike, though. You didn't do nothing. Ah, uh, yeah, don't worry. Your beast will be taken care of. As in, we'll keep him under. Uh-huh. We won't, like, uh-huh. I, I understand. Bed. You're okay. Uh, so they all stupid. bring you... <laughs> Why? This is stupid. You randomly shot somebody that didn't hey, do anything to you. That nobody am saw. I, am I with them now? So we're right. all bundled up now? Yeah, the guards are kind of circling around you. Uh, Char is leading the group, and she turns to Varian. She says, "Sorry about hitting you, but you weren't cooperating." I was Maybe. literally talking to you. What do you mean I wasn't cooperating? Yeah, but I said you're under arrest, and you just said you put the bow in your back. So. I, I said I will walk with you, and then you punched me. I gave you the option. And she I w- said no. won't give you the same option. Let's do this. I don't Go know ahead what and that arrest means. me. Is that a threat? I don't know what it means. Are you hey, going to punch me face, now? Man. What did you do this time? You're not over here. You can't talk to me. Yeah, I'm with you now. Walking in there, she motions for the guards and they move aside as you lead into this giant great hall. It's kind of like a, a giant tent that has like wooden support, so it's like the combination of a tent and a building. Uh, walking tall? inside, it's pretty tall, like 15, 20 feet to the ceiling. Wow. I'm walking inside, you notice uh, there seems to be like a balcony above and then that has like curving staircases that lead around and then sitting between those staircases on your level slightly above because of the raised platform is a very muscular um hobgoblin with a some sort of a big um axe that he has right laying on like the throne and next to him you see a masked figure currently with a bandaged leg standing next to him her arms are folded or their arms are folded. Um, and she has two other mass figures behind her. It's a her. It's a girl. <laughs> um, okay. She's looking at you guys as I well. I don't know who this person is. Um, uh, who's who's the, does Enix, the big guy? Does Enix recognize it as the person who was following him? It One of them might have been. Hmm. And is this the chief thing. that we're talking to? The big buff guy? <clears throat> You see Shar speaks up. Uh, Chief Doc, this is the... Uh, she points to Varian. This is the assailant that attacked one of the Amber Fist. So I'm gonna, unprovoked. I'm who? gonna um, kneel say. down next to... Well, as close as I can to him and just be like, look, I don't know what's going on, but I'm sorry. At least one of you knows how to respect our culture. Yeah, so that's, that's the culture. Just be people. I've heard uh, my, uh, I've heard the priestess side of the story. What's yours? What are you talking about? What side of the story? Side of the story. Why'd you shoot one of the amber fist? What's an amber fist? Just tell me what happened. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, who, who did I shoot? <laughs> he gestures to the woman standing next to him. Pretty... I was like, when? Who yeah. saw me shoot? Nobody. I was next to the guards the whole time. Roll a deception and... check with disadvantage. I'm going to go <gasps> and cover my mouth as I look over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't get the sense that he's buying any of this. Well, that's the story. There was guards behind me. I'm going to turn to the guards that were next to me and speaking goblin. And say, did you see me shoot a bow? Uh, Do you see him, the guard that was behind you speaks up in Goblin? He says, 
I I wasn't, to be honest, she had wings coming out of her back. They were skeletal. I was a bit distracted. I wasn't paying attention to him. It was my fault. But Wasn't it your job to watch me? Like, I literally, I just stepped behind a tree. It, and then Char, all of a sudden. Shara speaks up. She goes, I get arrested. There's also rules that I gave not to cause any trouble, but you broke those on, I think it was only within two hours. That might be a new record. What? What, what rules did we break? Not to cause any trouble? We weren't causing any troubles. You attacked a Listen, respected what? member. Once again, you keep them. saying I attacked somebody. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you exactly what... So the guards were next to us. The guards saw Amir burst into the thing. And that happens from time to time. We explained it to him. The guards understood. They said, don't be next... And we apologized. And then that was it. Now, if this individual felt attacked, like triggered or something, then that's on them. <laughs> that, that, I mean, maybe a wing hit a branch and sent like a splinter. I don't know. But I'll tell you one thing. I didn't do any of it. You see, Shara's uh, going to go up and she pulls one of your arrows out. Looks mighty similar to the one that uh, she brought to us. These are basic arrows. Yeah, but they're not any type that we have in the camp here. I've, yeah, got, because... I've got ones just like his. Oh, so did you shoot her? Yeah, Do we have the wrong person? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? One-handed. I, I pull the bow back with my mouth. If you unhandcuff me, I could show you. Uh, the masked figure speaks up, and you hear her say, It was the human with the bow. He shot me. Are you the one that was following me? And when I approached you, you ran like a chicken? You're afraid of Dragonborn? Is that what it is? I mean, I see there aren't any Dragonborn here. Is that why the other Dragonborn left? She doesn't respond to you. I see how it is. We does should just group, leave. The chief speaks. Does, the, does your group have anything to say? I was just shopping. I asked the guard. I, I'm trying to be... Uh, the guard that you actually have been friends with says, Yeah. He wasn't he wasn't doing anything. I don't even I don't even know if he actually like actually associates with this people, these people, but he's been with me. He hasn't been causing any trouble. Can I uh, ask all the guards? Can I do a slide of, do sleight of hand to undo these cuffs? Sure. Roll a sleight of hand. And yeah. You still appear able, that they're on. Undo them. <laughs> okay. You, how do you do? You you unlock them. Okay, I'm just gonna sit there for a second, just with them unlocked. Nobody seems to notice you. Okay. The highest they rolled was a 17, but that was again above the slide. Hey. I'm gonna ask them. Okay, hypothetically, I did do it. <laughs> what if I had good good reason? And what's the punishment if I did? The chief speaks up. Well, I would I would love to hear your reason. No, I said hypothetically, here. okay? <laughs> hypothetically, you shot them. Hypothetically, what would be your reason? Hypothetically, uh, I've had people try to come up behind me who are very sneaky and stab me and try to kill me. Was that what they were doing? Which is why you shot them with a bow? Because they were behind you? This is hypotheticals. I've heard her account of the story. Sounds reasonable to me. I'm going to believe her more than anything you say, but I do believe in fair judgment. And I brought you here to hear your side, and you've done nothing but lie. To me, to the church, to everything here. Now, oh, there's a church here. What, what is the church? Who do you worship as Eldrin? Say, is Bruce Lee here? I don't know who this Bruce Lee is. You know who Bruce Lee is. Man, if he would have waited, he got some brass knuckles here, probably. <laughs> Are you guys saying anything? Yes, who is... You say the church. What What do you worship? Uh, roll persuasion check. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to slightly shift my kneel over to the, the woman and just be like, I apologize for what happened to you, but I, I, I'm not sure who did it or who did what. 19. But, uh... I can promise you, we're we're not trying to make any trouble. Roll a persuasion check with advantage because you had a guard speak up for you. Mm. 
18 on his and 19 on mine. The chief speaks up and he goes, it's the church of, um, we worship the white fox. White you know, foxes? I've never seen those before. It's the, uh, master of knowledge. It's what the amethysts have. Should have just fucking that's, ran. That's awesome. Um, I might have to uh, talk about you with the white fox later. That sounds something uh, interesting. Don't know if that will be an option later. For me, I, I swear, I, I don't know what. You're... I'm gonna ask the, uh, the big guy if he has anybody in his life that he loves so much that he would do anything for. You ask chief, the chief. Yeah, the chief. Doc. Roll a persuasion check. Just regular. No advantage, no disadvantage. I don't see how this pertains to our current conversation. And I don't suppose you're going to give me a reason for that because you haven't given me a reason for any of your actions. I tell you what, you answer this question and I'll be straightforward with you. Hmm. I would do anything to save the people here in my village. People who are randomly attacked by outsiders that we let in hoping to trust. Okay, well, here's the story. Okay, I'm going to tell it my way. And it's probably going to be exactly what she said. Uh, with a little side twist. So, I noticed somebody was thinking behind us. My lovely wife went after uh, this invisible person. Or somebody who's very quick. I'm yeah, assuming she told it's us this... about that. Yeah, so then she scared it. And I figured it would talk to us because it was scared. And it would let us know what it was doing. Because, like I said, it's just true. People have tried to kill me. And I'm paranoid. So it started running away. And we have this dude who's literally been like trying to mess with us the entire time. We've gotten to the Underdark. And maybe I thought he followed us here. So, yes, I took two shots. She caught the first one. That was a good catch, by the way. Uh, second one, it was so a good you hear shot. Her, you hear her chuckle slightly. Uh, second one, yeah, I hit her, but I just wanted to talk to her. That's why I didn't do enough damage. You know how, like, your big chick punched the fuck out of me? That was my intention. But I don't have big fists like her, so it just fucking happened that way. Not about the size of the fist. It's about how you use it, she speaks up, Shar says. Correct. That is correct, but arrows don't work the same as your guys' magical fists, which are pretty cool. But unfortunately, uh, yeah, so she got away, obviously. She talked to you, and here I am. Oh, the most important part is my wife told me to do it. That's why I asked. <laughs> and I told you to jump <laughs> off a cliff. Would you jump off a cliff? You don't know my wife, and if she did, I would assume I'm dead if I don't. I will, I will walk over to Varian and uh, lift him up. Just be like, you hurt someone here. <laughs> kind of like wraps his arms around you. He's still bound. Um, Varian, make a persuasion check. Well, I will vouch for his story of the the man trying to kill us. He had similar skills to her of catching arrows and such. Very sneaky. He caught an arrow when I, sh I shot him the first time. The, the guy, the evil guy that's been trying to kill me. So I was just trying to get this figured out. Kind of like had it goes in his hands. To be fair, if he shot her, she was sneaking around. That was suspicious. It got me thinking. It's not illegal. She didn't attack you. Didn't I do happen. agree. That's on me and my wife. Mainly my wife. <laughs> Why wouldn't you just stop and talk? I went to talk to her and she ran like a chicken. Cause she's afraid of Dragonborn. I get it. Your group is to be banned from the city and never return. If we spot you anywhere near this village, you will give orders to kill on sight. I will, uh, I will slowly okay. walk towards him and just be like, graciously, I apologize and thank you for uh, not killing my friends. Uh, we will be out of your hair. Yeah, and he, the guards quickly uh, escort you out. Can as I, as I, question, I, as I, did, uh, that monk rolled to hit me and hit me three times. I, I know you're rolling yourself. Okay. Um, yeah. um, can she, I... She's she's high level. 
Does does monks work out where each punch is loaded with that, and they can load no, each punch she was, with a stun? No, she was she was spending a key point to try to stun you. Okay. She, as, she was using a lot of her resources on you. As the guards walk up, Enix is just going to be just reach over and hand him the cuffs. There you go. <laughs> just walk out um, on his own. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna ask for the ropes to be un, untied before we leave the chamber or whatever, and then, and then I'm gonna pull out the other bottle that I bought and I just say for your troubles and hand it to the chief. Um, one of the servants takes it, and as you're walking away, you hear the chief say, uh, "Check it for poison." But <laughs> <laughs> he's like, "If it's I'll, not poisoned, give me as much of it as you can." I'll, I'll I'll say I'll say I'll drink it first and I'll I'll take a sip. Sure. Uh, you take and seat. then, and then I'll I'll toss he the guard. He seems to be okay with you staying behind, but if any of you else try to, it might not be fine. I I will uh, I'll toss the guard that helped us just uh, enough for no, another one of those fruits. And just be like, be like, hey, make sure to uh, keep a good eye out, and uh, if you ever see me again, uh, don't worry, I, I'm a friend. As soon as you guys get out, they unlock your stuff. Let you know. And... They didn't respond. They didn't react when Enix handed them the. Ah, uh, they. It seemed you don't know if it seems like they were questioning if they locked it tight enough not necessarily your skill but their no, that's confidence fine. yeah um oh so, yeah, uh they... i mentioned rella's name does that give me any leeway with the big guy who do you mention it to the big uh big guy before we leave i say okay so, make an okay. insight check as soon as you mention it You notice the uh, masked figure standing next to him. He doesn't seem to respond to Rella. Um, but the masked figure, uh, the one that you shot standing next to him, kind of just very slightly tilts uh, her head. Okay. Um, very subtly. I noticed it? Yeah. I say to the little one, just because you recognize that name doesn't mean you could follow me and ask me questions later. You hear her say, I don't want to get shot again, so... Yeah, good good idea. I hope you come back. I really do. I, I bet you do, but I typically learn from these things. I won't be here again. Okay. Oh, where's the where's the big lady before we leave, the one that punched Varian? Uh, she's not... She's just Char, the one that introduced you to the... Oh, okay. I'm, I'm just going to walk up. Um, can you teach me how to punch him like that? <laughs> It's all about focusing your energy in on the fist, and you just need to find the right weak points. It takes it takes uh, some training. Um, uh, the monastery right, well, has to do that. I know, I know I'm banned from the city now, but uh, you know maybe we can work something out later. But a uh, pleasure to meet it's, you. It's a basic technique that many monasteries, uh, monk monasteries, teach. So you could probably find it in other places. Oh, don't worry. Today. I'm not. I'm not there for them. I'm there for you. Give her a wink. <laughs> you hear her say. You hear her say. If you decide to come back, that's fine. But the rest will kill on sight. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. May, no, I'll walk out. Nice. May Palos was light the only one that ever shine dimly on your own self. As we're walking out the gates, I'm going to be like, you're pretty confident you could kill me. So uh, hopefully we don't have to put that to the test, but I'd love to. <laughs> uh, as you guys walk out, yeah, it is getting... <laughs> Actually, as you guys walk out, you see the uh, shaman and Caviera. She's walking out, and she walks outside the gate. Eh, why are you guys leaving so soon? <laughs> the sen the sense didn't tell you? Echo again. Eh. They say a lot of things. Okay. Well, I shot somebody important, so. That will do it. That will do it. Uh, back in my day, they would have just chopped off their head. Yeah, well, I definitely wouldn't have got caught if I thought that was the case. Oh. Uh, well, I... I hope I get other newcomers coming by soon. Your visions were, um, interesting. I thought you didn't see them. <laughs> I don't see all of them. Oh, I, see I, see. I see, I see. Your group is something different. There's something special about you. Oh, here we are getting punched to death by your shitty officers. Eh, not my shitty officers. 
I, I hope to somehow see you again. Remember, well, my tent's on the edge of town, so you can just climb over the wall and come see me whenever you want. Yeah, no, I'm not doing that. Sounds good, lady. I'll send Anubis in. And you can come out. Uh, I gotta go sleep. Those visions are taking a lot out of me. Uh. As you guys walk out, it is getting nighttime. It's getting dark because you did not get a rest in the town. Um, we'll get, I don't know, how far away is acceptable? I can hear uh, that you, too. You walk a couple, uh, probably like almost a mile or two away. We can set up a camp. Who's keeping watch? I need, I'll just have two people do watch. Otherwise it's going to take forever. I'll keep watch. I'll keep watch as well. Perception check, perception check, with advantage from Varian. Damn. Hey, um, during both of your watches? Rachel, can you mute? You don't notice anything different? So. It is, yeah. Rachel. Uh, you notice a few wild animals. Um... Didn't have it on Discord. Stop. That did. Yeah, that's it. You don't notice anything weird. All right. We'll head out and keep heading in the direction of the Tinker. Tinker Road. Yeah. Need somebody to roll a survival check? Others, two people roll a perception check. Person with advantage, do that. I'll do perception. Uh, yeah, okay. and a mirror. Okay. Uh, it, you guys are slowing a little bit as you change terrain from the grassy plains to the mountains. But break on to a new map. Uh, imagine this is more mountains to the right. I don't know why there's not mountains there. But uh, yeah. You guys end up like right there and going how much did you roll for survival 13 so you're in front oops it's right there actually you come up right over there that's where you do that's why it is oh uh, yeah walking up you get to the mountains uh climbing up to the near the top of this one you look out and you see to your left you see a uh, orchard of trees, uh, just regular like what appears to be forest trees. Looking forward, you see hills uh, with a uh, some sort of cherry blossom forest in front of you. Um, and then, uh, yeah, Anubis and Amir both notice very, very far off into the horizon. You see the almost like a extremely tall. The fact that you can see it from this length means that it's pretty tall. Um, singular almost leafless tree like you just see the very edge of it off into the distance to the left is that towards the tinker it's right um here. yeah the tinker is like uh up here in those mountains so yeah but i think this is the tree he's referring to yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna say to the people like, hey, there's a tree over there that doesn't have leaves. And you just okay. see like the very tip of it. Oh. Yeah, I th I think those are called dead trees. But yeah, that happens. Yeah, I wonder why it's dead with everything else though. I wonder some weird stuff, oh. my friend. Which way are you guys heading? Towards the tinker. Towards the dead tree. Fastest. Well, fastest. you you have the. With a ranger, going through the mountains can be rather fast. All right. Usually it'd be faster to go around, but since you got Barry in here, who's pretty good mountains. We'll stick, with the, good. We'll stick with the mountains then. Uh, just roll another survival check. Sixteen. Yeah, yeah, you're easily able to get through, and you get pretty close to the tree. It's pushing night time. Okay. You guys have to set up camp. Okay. So. Who's keeping watch? 
we're gonna get attacked and then he's gonna say and we'll deal with that next episode sorry I was muted first watch that or another dragon's gonna show up and he was or yeah he's keeping your watch out looking around it's pretty dark you don't notice anything Spike seems to be happy Like. Not used to being outside. But he seems to not mind it. Next watch. I'll go. Perception. Mm -hmm. Um, you notice um some of those uh flying around. You don't know if they're the giant eagles or the giant owls, but you notice the the giant birds flying. Okay. Seem to be more as you get closer to the mountains. Which makes sense. Next. Uh, it'll join the watch. Okay. Roll perception check. Eleven. <clears throat> as you're sitting by the fire, kind of looking into it, You I need you to make a constitution saving throw as a something flies from the forest and explodes in your face. Uh okay. Who called it? I called it. Do we hear an explosion? Uh thirteen. Alright. I need you to make another constitution saving throw as another one flies and explodes in your face. Okay, <laughs> the first one was a pouch of uh, pink. The second one was a pouch of blue. As the blue one hit, the pink one hits you and you kind of feel sleepy, but then you're able to wave it off. The blue one, or the pink one hits you and you feel sleepy. The blue one hits you and you're, you get locked up. You are currently uh, stunned. And you see coming from the forest two little bird people. Kenku. Uh, they kind of walk up to you. Uh, you see them, they have like spears pointed. They're looking around the camp. They look at um. Let's see what they see. <laughs> um, you see them. He has met these guys, huh? And uh, they signal back, and you see a giant, like a giant owl, um, with a another bird person sitting on it. This one has um some sort of a uh, bone mask on. Uh, that's like an uh, another. You don't know what type of bird it is, but it has another like bird's bone mask on. You have it. tokens for these or no? Uh no. Not for a reason. Wow, what an unprepared GM. I know, I'm so unprepared. Mm. Um, but you see him kind of like uh, he's saying he's making making like squawks and doing some gestures, and they, the two that have uh, approached you, start to lift you up and drag you towards the owl, and the owl picks you up in its claws, okay, and flies away. And you guys don't hear anything because it is an owl and it is silent as fuck. We didn't hear the things explode? No, because they weren't like explosions. It was more like a, a bag full of powder that just poof on impact. You remember how you said like arrows make noise? Yeah, but you can still like silently kill people if you throw quietly. And also arrows hit stuff versus a bag of powder. Doesn't. Bag of powder <laughs> hits him and Elder goes, ah! <laughs> so. Uh, okay, oh. so he's gone. I'm going to fish for a natural 20 here, see if I wake up. Uh, well, you would be rolling with disadvantage because you're sleeping. Uh, be normal because I'm in the do it. How, how long does this last? This um, stun? Well, I'll tell you what you see. Okay. Uh, so you're soaring through the air. This owl is picking you up, has picked you up, and it is currently flying uh, towards the tree. And as they fly closer, you see that it's not just a tree. It is One, it's a giant couple hundred feet tall tree and you see little homes that are uh, on uh, the branches of the smaller tree and then you see um, some that are hanging from uh, the bigger tree and looking down as you're stunned kind of like held in this uh, bird's hands you see that these is it's a Kenku village you've never seen one but you know it's like they have nest in the they have like more houses less nest in the um, 
trees and looking down on the floor, uh, the ground near these trees, you see livestock, you see animals. Uh, and it reminds you that there was a bunch of animals missing from Saludia City, like they had been stolen. And you get the sense this is where they ended up. Oh, okay. We ran into these. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. we did, as they were trying to steal Spike. Yes. Um, and as uh, the bird lands on one of the biggest, one of the biggest branches that are in the the main dead tree, and he kind of drops you. And, Am I um, still stunned? You you feel that the stun. You don't feel like you wear off the stun. You feel like something else makes you wear off the stun. As coming from the trunk of the tree where you didn't see anything before, you see a, a woman that's made of. She seems to have a body that's made of leaves and twigs and branches. And she walks up, and you're you're not stunning anymore. What do you do? Why did why did they kidnap me? Uh, she kind of leans down as you sit up, and she goes, "I, I am sorry, but communicating them with them has been quite difficult. I didn't mean for them to kidnap you. I just meant for them to communicate with you. But I guess they can't tell the difference." <laughs> What is your name? I'm um, Ildren. Mm. It is nice to meet you, Ildren. And your name is? Uh, I don't really have a name. What do you want to call me? What do they? What do people call you? I don't talk to people. I talk to Kenku. They call you. Okay. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Oh, is that what you would like me to call you? I would prefer an actual name, but it's, it's up to you. What do you want to call me? Well, I am a worshipper of Palor. Who who mm -hmm. shall you worship? Let me pull up my god list. I... Hmm. Hmm. I guess the closest divine being, if they're still around, it's been forever. Uh, you could associate me with his Nava, the goddess of balance, of nature. So what? What are you? What? Oh, I am. I speak for, and she gestures to the tree behind her. I speak for the seeding spirit. It is the tree that uh, marks the home for these Kenku. Okay, so what you sent them to speak to me. I sent them to retrieve your group. Well, they retrieved me. So yeah. If you want, I can go back and, and get our group, but I see that you have many animals. Probably yeah. stolen from somewhere. You could say stolen. Or rescued, as you may say. Mm. The animals chose to come here after they were freed. That's fair. Take that as you will. Yes. This tree, the, the seeding spirit, draws nature to it. It draws things to it. Well, if you could have... I mean, I can fly back to my camp on my own, but you why? Can. Why would they? Why would? Why would? Why would you need to speak to my group? She kind of uh, sighs. There's been a problem. See, our village. We're not the Kenku. They are amazing people, and they are amazingly good at what they do. But they are not fighters we are being threatened and I need the help of a group one skilled with the blade with magic I spoke to the tree and asked and they pointed me towards your group yes we uh, obviously Paylor has told him that our group is is very good at this that might be it uh, what what kind of threats do you have against you um, they're goblins, but they're more than that. They're not just regular goblins, they're evergreen goblins. 
What does what interesting? Is, what does that mean? Uh, roll in a nature check. Mm, that's pretty means. neat. Boom, nat 20. Okay, you recognize, you immediately recognize Evergreen Goblins. In Aberntharon and the Mixed Colonies, there's not too many of Evergreen Goblins. Um, they tend to stick around uh, the more of the outside continents, because uh, nobody knows where they came from. But they are a group of goblins that are extremely dangerous uh, in colonies when they get in numbers. Uh, one, one on one, they're, but they are extremely adaptable uh, and more intelligent than your regular goblin and more brave they're not gonna break as easily um but they are just like a mean pack of goblins some people think that they are a crossbreed between hobgoblins and regular goblins um some people think that they are a curse from an angry god <laughs> but they have no been known large groups of them have been known to destroy like fortified villages and fortified cities if left unchecked and so they're not good. Yes, well, is is there a group of them attacking your village, or...? There is a large group of them nearby, and they have uh, killed off scouts and killed off Kenku that have gone too far from the village, and I fear that they may threaten uh, the seeding tree itself eventually, if left unchecked. And my power is limited to vicinity to the tree. Well, there are advantages and some disadvantages to using our group. We would require payment. Uh, or some sort of I wouldn't be able to offer a gold amount, as I believe your group would be interested in, but I can talk with the Kenku, and some of them might have trinkets. Yes, we, we, would, we could trade for items, or barter for, for items as far as your work, but... You know we are a we are a group of good, and Paylor has has brought you to me for a reason. So obviously he chose wise when you kidnapped the right person. I must say. <laughs> yes, I will make sure Bone returns you to your group. I can get Bone, back. and she calls towards the the Kenku wearing all the bone. He actually has he has like a lot of bones on him. He has the bone mask, and then bone armor, and then bone weapons. And some sort of like shell type shield and he, he kind of gets off the the owl and as you look around you see other owls the owl that bone is on is bigger than the rest and it has like black feathers um and bone takes off his helmet and as he does you see that he has like a uh, almost like a mohawk of green feathers that kind of go in behind his head and disappear and she says now this is gonna be difficult for you to understand but please return the man to his camp from where you found him. And don't take anyone else. Do I know from the direction they sent me how to get back to camp? Oh yeah, God. you were awake during the time they were flying. So yeah. Okay. Um, right. And as the sun starts to rise, uh, Bone motions for you to follow him as he puts back on his helmet. All right. I'm going to do my... Um... You don't think that will last. It only lasts for a minute. You okay. don't think that would be able to last to get you all the way back. All right, I will uh, jump on with him. Uh, Bone kind of jumps on the back and he grabs them uh, tough of feathers. He doesn't have like a harness he puts around the owl. He kind of just uh, barebacks it. <laughs> saddle, no saddle. And he, he uh, does some sort of motion with the owl and the owl takes off quietly because it is an owl. Um, you all wake up at camp. And Ildren's gone. Nice. Guys, uh, did you see him wander up to pee or something? <laughs> Keep this in mind, if anybody ever disappears from the group, <laughs> they don't give a shit. Okay. <laughs> Eventually, within about 20-30 minutes, you see a owl that lands near the center of camp. And Ildren's on the back of it with a bird. The Kenku that kind of keeps low. I'm just looking at everybody. Hey, look at that! It's a big, uh, big owl. Is that that thing flying around the entire time we've been? 
Yes, well, this is my friend Bone. Bone doesn't move. He's just staring at everybody. This isn't one that we met, right? No. They require our assistance. Um, they have a group of goblins, evergreen goblins, that are attacking their village. And they are requesting our help. Aelor has directed them to our group. Because that is what we are good at. Okay, what well, are we definitely are on a time constraint here, so... It won't take too long, then. Sure, but we don't have a lot of wiggle room here. Well, I would like, we should probably go and meet. I will introduce you to the one who would be requiring us of this test. Did they tell you where they would be? I can see that big tree that, the, that Anubis was talking about. No, the people were hunting for the quest. Amir, make a wisdom saving throw. Continue. Yeah, well, they they would be able to point us in the direction of where they've been attacked, and I would like you to meet the Lady of the Tree. Okay. Because I did not agree that we would help them, but I said that I would speak to our group. Okay. I think we should head that way. As you guys pack up camp, you see Bone kind of seemingly hearing what he wants to hear. Starts to fly off. And that's where we're ended. Alright. Toy. Toy, toy, toy. Nice. Alright, everybody. Thanks for uh, sticking around. Uh, thanks for the host. There's a lot of them tonight. We really appreciate that. Um, my watch is telling me to stand. I'm not going to. Can't tell me what to do. You don't control me. Um, we appreciate uh, all the support. We will be doing. Uh, we will have Thursday going our uh, Water Deep campaign. Um, we are working with a a new some new program for the video and audio, so we're slowly working the kinks out of that. Seems to be working better. Audio was much much better. So, um, but uh, we will see you all again. Thursday, we will do a replay of this uh, all day tomorrow. Um, it'll be this one, our last Thursday's episode and the most recent episode from Sunday. And then we will be on again Sunday. So don't forget, uh, we have merch in the merch store, the Drunkards and Dragons shirts. As you can see, uh, Amir is wearing. Um, and we also have Drunkards and Dragons hats. Uh, available in the old man dad hats like this and uh some nice flat brim that are really nice actually so thanks again we'll see you all again on thursday have a great night